Why is everything you know chrome? Bad, no cap when we talk about facts. I double the rib, the stack. Won't kick my feet up, won't lag. We born, I did no stats. You saw you freezing, I snatch. She called me to beat up the gas. She called me like, be where you at? Everything is chrome in the. And we back for another special episode of the Fresh Start Podcast. It's your boy DJ Boom. I'm sitting here with a special guest. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey man, this Guap Soldier, aka Guap Pop. You know what I'm saying? Yo. Shout out to uh, Pop, you know what I mean? Yo, so shout out to Pop. Uh, is that a big inspiration for you? or? Yeah, because actually, like, Pop was like probably like the first rap artist I ever heard. You know what I'm saying? Before that, when I was younger, my dad, you know, he from the old school, so he listened to like RB, soulful music, and like reggae, and I was listening to Latin rock before, way before rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was listening to Carlos Santana. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to um, Shaggy, uh, Bob Marley. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And just all of the, the, the R&B greats. You know what I'm saying? But then, like, that 2002 part came out with that uh, Better Days album. And that was kind of like the first rap album I ever, like, you know what I'm saying, heard or whatever. Yeah. So, I say pop really, like, a real big inspiration on me. Okay. You know? So that being said, like for those that don't know, I mean, obviously with pop, uh, they imagine music, but what all is Wop Soldier? What all do you do, bro? I do everything. Like I'm, when you listen to me, you hear like versatility. You hear, you know, the clarity. You know, cause you know, I, when I put out something, I always got to make sure it's the best quality. When I go to the studio, I go to the big studios, and I record in them, and you know what I'm saying. So. Uh, it's just better quality, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to be out there with the greats. So, what was your question again? You asking, like, what makes me? Like, what 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 I do? I was just saying, like, what 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 all do you do? So, like, you're, you're a I, rapper. I rap. Yeah. I, I do some singing with auto-tune. I just like to have fun with that auto-tune, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I mean? Just play on that freestyle, you know what I'm saying? Like, But a lot of people just want me to go back to rapping. Like, they like me better when I was rapping. Like, you listen to Dope Biggie, my uh, EP. Uh, I'm going off on it, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking that shit, you know what I'm saying? Niggas, and I've been getting some good response off of that EP, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Niggas, mm-hmm. niggas like it. Niggas, niggas like tell me all the time, man. I, man, they keep jamming, you know what I'm saying? So I, I must be dead something on that, like to catch their attention in the right way, you know what I'm saying? So, well, let's talk about running back real quick, cause that one's going crazy. Oh, yeah, that running back? Yeah. <laughs> so you want to talk about that, that record a little bit? Yeah. Man, that running back, that shit actually old. Though. That shit from, like, 2019, yeah. right? I got the original fucking file in my Gmail mm. that's saying, you know, from back then with the dates and stuff. So I originally recorded it, and what I do is I don't throw a song away. I, I go back and re-record it again, but in a better studio. So I actually took it to a real studio, you know what I'm saying, Atlanta, and I recorded it. Oh, I recorded a lot of songs over, and um, I just like, man, that shit was hard. Like somebody, like you know, I've been asking people to get on the verses, but they ain't want to, you know what I'm saying, get on it. So I was like, shit, I had to go, you know, write another verse, and that shit came out hard. You know what I'm saying, harder than it ever did. You know what I mean? When did you start getting into music, though? Like really start recording? Start recording. Yeah. Bro, we was like kids. We was babies. It was like me, my cousin, and my other, and his, my other cousin. And we, it was like three of us. We had like a little group. And we was love rapping and shit on the what tape. Was the group called? The Tank Dogs. Yo. <laughs> tank Dogs. <laughs> and shit, I mean, we thought we was no limit or something or whatever. Cash money or something, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> So like shit, I used to like to just hear myself like on the tape record, record over it on the radio, like over the beat or something, and you listen to yourself and hear yourself be like, oh shit. Well yeah, one of my cousins was like, bro, you you not you rhyming, but you not sticking to to uh, subject, you know what I'm saying? And just like shit, I had to get my shit right. Are they still making music? Nah. Nah. You the only one. Yeah. Shout out to Cuz, man. You know, I've been a part of a couple of groups, man, but, you know, hey, I'm not chill. You prefer uh, working alone? Hell yeah. Yeah. I, 
absolutely, because I could be the best artist I could be. Like, I could be free. I don't have to just sit in, like, one setting. Like, when you hear me, you hear multiple sounds. We hear different shit. You know, just shit. I might make some shit for the women. Like, my, I feel like my female records are my best records. Like, my female friendly records are my best records. So, that's what I go for. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it is. I don't mean to keep repeating the same thing, but. Nah, you good. So besides pop, like who are some other people that you were listening to growing up? Growing up on the rap, man. Yeah. Or just music in general. Mm, I like R&B a lot. Yeah. I like Jack and Edge. I like True Will. I like um, it's a lot more people like Tevin Campbell, Luther Vandross. Okay. You know, I I really like. Lettuce and I listen to it because back then, like, music was way more original. Like, everybody had their own unique sound. Like, you know, that's Luther. Nobody sound like Luther but Luther. You know, that was Gerald LeVert. You know what I'm saying? I call myself Walt LeVert because I'm on other alter ego. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that was their sound. You know what I'm saying? And you know what it was. I like Joe to see. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm a player as nigga, so like, I got, I got to listen to shit that, you know, how, how they was getting the women. Like, I, I really learned how to get women through r and music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that being said, like, how do you feel about how music has kind of progressed to today? Where, like, back then, like you said, you had, you knew who each person was. They had their own flavor. They had their own sound. And nobody was allowed to sound like each other. Right. Now, fast forward to the day where it's like. I think that era started when Ace Hood came out with that song on. What was the name of that song he had? Talk about Bugatti? No. Yeah. Hustle, hustle, hustle hard. Close my eyes, don't get fed. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That hustle hard flow, I think, that's when I started seeing people biting his style. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it just like kind of switched over and then they started doing like the Migos. You know what I'm saying? And then that shit just kept going and going and going. Mm-hmm. So... I said Ace Hood, that's when I really kind of heard, like... Like, noticed it. Yeah. Mm. So... Them Florida niggas hard, too. I like them Florida niggas, bro. Like, them niggas, is, it's some hard-ass Florida niggas, bro. Florida is on the rise, bro. I, I see what they got going on, huh? Where you from? I'm from Savannah. Okay. Savannah, Georgia. I'm off the west side, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to them Florida niggas, though, like... That nigga J. Dot Breezy, you know what I'm saying? Got down. Boston Richie going in, but I love that nigga hard, boy. Yeah. Like, Richie, don't get me started. Oh my God, God. <laughs> That's what I'm rock, I rocking with right now, you know what I'm saying? That's on repeat. Like, Boston Richie, nigga, you're hard, nigga. You're hard. Hey, so how do you, how do you feel about, like, or how do you go about collaborating with artists? Because I've seen that you. Have collaborated with a few of people that I know, like uh, Aspen Martin. Oh, my nigga Aspen Martin, bro, it's hard, bro. I feel like bro don't get his respect and his props. Yeah. You know, bro is a very talented artist, bro. Like, we did a song, Can I Hit It, you know, two years ago in 2020. We recorded that song when the pat during the pandemic. Like, that's when I was making my best music, like when everybody was just locked in. So I used to just go to the studio every weekend and record. And I felt like I was making the best music of my life. So I brought him into that, you know what I'm saying? I actually wrote that song year, many years ago. You know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, he was on live or whatever. And I was talking to him on the live. I was like, I'm going to be in the studio tomorrow. I was like, bet I pull up. So that just came about like that. I was going to sing it on the auto tune, but I'm not a good singer. So I was like, bro, I'm going to let, <laughs> yeah. let, 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 let the Savannah Drake do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's Drake right now, man. Like, he talented, bro. Like, the man can rap, man, and sing, bro. Like, he remind me of Drake. You know what I'm saying? Like, he the, he the next thing to Drake. Like, but he ain't from Canada, though. That's a solid thing. Shout out to that man. That's lit. That shit hard, man. Like, that shit got a Cali vibe to it. I was just like, listening to it. Oh, yeah? yeah? It got a nice little bounce to it, Cali vibe, you know? So, so yeah, let's I love to- California, too. Shout out to Cali. Have you been out there? Yeah, I've been to Cali, I've been to the Bay. Mm. I've been to Vallejo and San Francisco. So yeah, let's get back uh, into this latest release with uh, Blue Flame. 
Blue Flame, man. Shout out to the Blue Flame, man, because they really showed me some love. Like, it was a skit with this guy named Rob Robbie World or whatever, and um, he he did a skit for one of my songs called Where They At or whatever, and he did it at Blue Flame. Uh, me not knowing none of this stuff that, that he did, and then he put Swamp Izzo in the video too. And, um, man, I was like, wow, he put Swamp Izzo on it, like, that's crazy. And that shit did numbers, like, the first night, got like 300,000 views, and then I posted on my page, I got like 45,000 in a day, and then Blue Flame posted, they got like 60,000, so I'm like, bro, my name buzzing, buzzing around, and I got other influencers with millions of followers in my DM, trying to work with me, you know what I'm saying, so it's just like, that was crazy, bro. Like that marketing, that's that, that's real key right there. You know what I mean? Take me, take me back through your story. Um, cause you said you was in a group, or you had started a group with your friend when you were super young. My and cousin. Was, yeah, with your cousins. Um, and you had been in a couple groups since then. And then even earlier, we was talking about uh, your internship in Atlanta. If you want to get into that. Oh yeah, I did an internship. On, well. Let's take it back a little bit. Um, twenty eleven, I'm coming. I'm getting up the school bus. I uh, I walk in the house. My mom and they, my granddaddy and I, and like I put my stuff down. And I come back in the room. Man, he was dead. You know what I'm saying? Like he had died. You know what I'm saying? On like May the third, twenty eleven. So I was just like, that was like a month before I graduated high school. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, bro, I gotta get the fuck up out of Savannah. I gotta get up out of here, man. I just can't be here. So I end up getting an internship at Treeside in 2012. You know what I'm saying? I'm like 19 years old, when I'm 20 or whatever. And I get the internship or whatever. I told them folks, like, hey, bro, whatever I got to do, I don't care if I got to clean toilets or whatever. Like, I'm a, hum I'm a humble nigga, so like, I got I do what I got to do, you feel me? So they end up calling me back. I end up moving up there. You know what I'm saying? This intern, I mean, at this, yeah, internship at the studio. Like, when I say studio, like, this studio is like no, no regular studio. It's a legendary studio. I'm talking about, like, all the class A artists, big artists in the world been recorded at the studio. And it's a lot of legendary hits that have been made in the studio. Like, what a time to be alive. You know what I'm saying? Like, all kind of things. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm up here at the studio in Atlanta, and I'm meeting, I'm seeing all these rappers and all that, like J. Cole, I'm seeing... Mike Will made it, you know, like, this man gave me a CD before I even knew who he was, you know what I'm saying? So, like, he used to send me to the store type stuff. I'm like, this man got all these big records on the radio, and he talking to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, it kind of make you feel a little bit of importance, you know what I'm saying? Like, in, in, right in, a, in a humble way. Yeah. In a humble way, like, like, but, like, man, you know, it's just like, I even met, like, Made in Tokyo. You know, Made in Tokyo, mm -hmm. Uber Everywhere. Mm -hmm. This man was not a rapper. Two years before this man blew up, I met this man. Like, this man used to tell me like how his brother Rizzy get paid for features all the time. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to get paid too. You know what I'm saying? He used to see him getting money like that, and he wanted to rap. And he used to tell me about how he used to live in Tokyo and stuff like that. So man, he used to come to the studio. I seen him all the time. They come to the studio. So man, two years later, bro, I'm like hearing the song. I'm like, oh, this shit right, man. I look at the video, I'm like, this little motherfucker right here, like the same, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so <laughs> I'm like, damn, boy, I'm like, well, I'm proud of that boy, boy. Like, I done been around people, like, people before they done blew up, met him, like, you know, Kwando, you know what I'm saying? I met him a month before he blew up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I told that little nigga I'm proud of him, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, bro, you know, came a long way and, and he did his thing, you know what I'm saying? So Shout out to him. Tell me, like, what success look like to you? What you trying to do in the rap game? Like, what I'm trying to do in the rap game? Yeah. Like, like I've been perfecting my, my sound over the years, so it's just like, I just want to elevate, you know what I'm saying? I just want to keep elevating. I just don't want to be in a, in a box, you know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, always keep going, you know what I'm saying? Up, you know, moving with the culture or whatever, but I just see myself being a millionaire, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. music. You know what I'm saying? Whether well, it's signing an artist, 
you know, whatever, whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying, however it's coming, you know, I'm you always, love music. yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stand for all of it. Yeah. You ever see yourself quitting and like moving into other stuff? Nah, I feel like, I feel like you, when you give up, like, that's just, that's just when it's over with, you know what I'm saying, like, so I can't really, nah, I ain't gonna really do nothing like that. No. No. I feel it. So what, what's, uh, what's something that people probably don't know about you. I was born with, with like this veil over my face. I like, okay, I'm gonna get into the story why, who I was before Guap Soldier and why I changed my name to Guap Soldier. So, okay, I was born with like this veil over my face, which is like an extra layer of skin. And people who born with that can see like deja vu and stuff like that. And I really could see Deja Vu and like the stern spirits, like, you know, from good or bad, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I was born with this thing over my face and they had to like cut it off and stuff. Look it up, it's called a call, C A U L, you know what I'm saying? And that's something people don't know about me. So that's why I named myself Two Face at one point in time. But then I had to change it because it was, you go to, you try to look me up. It's hard to find me because you yeah, got Batman, Batman yeah. shit. You got yeah. everything. I'm like, bro, I'm trying. To, I can't even find my music, bro. Like, no, that's not this name, not it. You know what I'm saying? So, my homeboy, uh, his name was Guap Soldier, and like he an African or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I used to like laugh at that shit. Like, what the fuck is Guap Soldier? Like, I used to check him about that. Like. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and shit. Next thing you know, I just like, man, you know, man, I'm trying to name myself Guap. Guap, so, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, all right, for sure, man, you know what I'm saying? But his job is to spell different, you know what I'm saying? So I just took spelling off it and changed it. I was like, hey, man, I'm Guap. Because my first name, Rico, R-I-C-O, <clears throat> excuse me, R-I-C-O, and then soldier is just the pain, you know what I'm saying? The things that I went through, you know what I'm saying, in my childhood and stuff like that. So I feel like, you know, I'm a guap soldier, you know what I'm saying? And it really wasn't, I didn't really pick that name. It was just, you know. That's just what it came to. Yeah. It's like, I, I used to make fun of this shit, man. I'm rocking this shit. Hey, that's that combo. That's that combo, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that being said, like, do you ever see yourself, uh, Leaving Savannah, moving Savannah, moving out of Savannah again. Mm, I guess so. You can say that. I mean, I like Florida a lot, you know, but I don't know, man. I just, I can't really say. It, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Do you think in due time, when it well, whatever happened, it happened. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna really like. I feel. Do you think it's necessary? Uh, people talk about like hometown hate. Um, do, and do you feel like it's necessary for you to move out of your city for you to go? I don't know, man. It depends. Like, I've been talking to some people that are successful from here in the music industry, like a DJ or something. And you just like, shit, you, it, don't, it don't sometimes it don't be like that. It just be the beef that you had before or whatever you got going on. Sometimes make it kind of, make it dangerous for you to be where you at. But... It's all love, you showing my love, I don't, and you move the right way, I feel like it shouldn't be a problem, but you definitely should, should get out and just, like, expand yourself, because you done been there so long, so, like, it's just time to move on to a different, a better life, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I feel that. So, you got, uh, what happened with the group situation that you just don't, you'd rather work by yourself? Uh, it's just... Group situation, it ain't really nothing too much. It's just, I just kind of move better, you know what I'm saying, doing my own thing, you know. Because I really ain't got to depend on other people to get stuff done. When, you know, I'm a type of person, I like to get stuff done, I like to get it done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to wait around, procrastinate, do all that talking, you know what I'm saying? So, that's just all it is. I just, I just like to move, you know, Maybe my you pace. You want to. Yeah. And, you know, I invest in myself, so. Like, when you see me in them big studios and see me everywhere, that's me. That's my money. I ain't got nobody. 
no boss, no no big dude, big homie over me. You know what I'm saying? I'm the big homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you ever see yourself signing? To a major? Uh, this or another really, artist? Really anywhere, not signing. Where I know you want to sign uh, other artists, but would you ever sign to another artist? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Oh, yeah, my fault. Uh, It depends on what his status is. Mm. You know, if it's somebody like Gucci Mane, yeah, because I see what he what he can do for his artist. Like, mm. damn, that every artist done popped off who he done signed. You know what I'm saying? Or done came through his way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if it was somebody like that or that type of status that are known for blowing artists up and making them big, or, you know, if it's just a loyalty thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? But, it, and if it makes sense, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But uh, father like a major, uh, I wouldn't mind signing to a major because just to get the experience, yeah. get you know, a lot of artists gain, uh, get the get the fame and the clout off the uh, off the machine, and then they take it and go independent and be even bigger or make more money by the you know independent. Mm -hmm. So they they really finesse the system. They really use the machine to get them popping. They they gain the fame. Yeah. Cause the machine gonna put you out there. Like they gonna. They got the money, they got the resources, they got the they got the phone calls, they can call and, and press that button. Press that button, like, okay, yeah, we need to get this done. So tell me about your like creative process. For me, like when I'm in the studio, mm -hmm. when I go to the studio, like I used to record myself, like a lot. I used to record at the house, record myself, because I be an engineer and stuff. But uh lately I've been going to the real studios and stuff, and I just like to get in there with the engineer. You know what I'm saying? I like to get get a little lit, you know what I'm saying? And um I just go I put the beat on and I go in there and I record. Like the last time I was in the studio, I freestyled like eight songs in one night, like back like quick. Going crazy. Like, I am like, I never did nothing like that before. I'm like, bro, how did I do this? Like I just go in there and go and just freestyle, like raw motion. You know what I'm saying? He so, said it was so with your name being so <laughs> is that the majority of your music you would say? Is speaking about like paying music? I wouldn't say that. No. It's a mix. Mm. You know. I got a mix of the thing. Like I can't just be that artist and just talk about sad shit all day. Talk about death all day. Mm. I'm not gonna do it. Like I like to talk, I like to listen to stuff that make me happy. I don't wanna even though I am going through pain, I wanna hear something that's gonna not remind me of that, take my mind off of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So with me, you get you get you get you get your club records, you get your street records, you get you know female friendly, you get some turn, you know whatever. Like I got different things, you know, some sad shit, you know, real life, you know what I'm saying? Just depending on the mood that I'm in, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going out and I just say what I feel. Yeah. Is it who are some artists in the industry today that you like to work with? You already know, man. Uh, Drizzy. Yeah. Drizzy for sure. Um, Pluto. Future. You got to. <laughs> Future. Rich, Rich Homie. Yeah. Rich Homie Corn. Niggas, like, Rich Homie Corn hard, bro. His last project went crazy. That nigga, like, I feel like niggas sleeping on Rich Homie. Like, I always been a Rich Homie. Like, I was, like, going through a situation I was going through, you know, when I came back from Atlanta. And I, I first heard this. Well, I first heard, I first heard Rich Homie Kwan's song at Paul Dia, well, Dia, well, the owner of the studio, Tree Sign, mm -hmm. at his house or whatever. And I was like washing dishes, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because I had to clean up something real quick. And I, I heard the uh, differences, you know what I'm saying? So I heard this little project and he was like, uh, the first song he was like, you know, they sign yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that shit kind of just like stuck with me. And I, I'm just like, I always respect him for that. You know, that investment song, that shit was hard. You know what I mean? Young Blue hard too, you know? Hell yeah. Young Blue is it's hard. I done been to that nigga house and all. Yeah. Like, that nigga got a big ass house, bro. Like, <laughs> ridiculous, boy. Young Blue, hey, shout out to him. How been to Rick Ross house too. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the new uh, one or the old one? The one in Atlanta. What that is, the promised land? Uh, yeah, I think so. The one that was Holyfield House? The Big Ranch? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've been, uh, 
Shit, tell That's me about motivation. It. Hell yeah, it's motivation. That nigga got goddamn a mini state <laughs> property. <laughs> Man, I know you got so much goddamn land, bro. No. It is ridiculous. Rose, hey. hey. I'm trying to, I tap in with Let me Rose too. Let me hold 40. <laughs> hey, I sign with Rose too. Oh, yeah. God. If Rose signed me, oh, God, because I'm going. Big, I'm trying to get bossed up like the balls, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about, um, have there been some moments when you thought, like, you know what, maybe I, maybe this just isn't it? What, you talking about rap? Yeah. Man, you go through them days, man, but you just got to keep going, man. You know, they're taking a serious budget. Well, not a too serious, but, you know, I've been tapping in with some folks in the industry that I know, and, you know, they just, just get, put me on game, what I need to do, and how much this costs, and, okay, all right, babe. I'm saying that's how it take. All right, let's, let's let's go run it up and let's go get to. So how do you how do you push through those moments when when you just ain't feeling like it? When I ain't feeling like it, yeah. like I haven't recorded some songs in a couple months. Yeah. I like and that's because I like to go experience life and then go back and make some. So I, as I'm gathering data every day and going out on my daily, I got more stuff to talk about. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I kind of take a little break and then I go back to talking about what I'm supposed to be talking about. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And it makes it makes it more raw, more authentic. Yeah. So yeah. I just take my time with it, man. I don't ever rush it. When it come, it come. It don't, it don't. I still got a lot of you know, material that I'm sitting on. Yeah. That I ain't, this ain't even half of my material. I just been holding, you know. I got some, I got EPs on top of EPs. I was about to ask, how many songs do you think you got in the tub? I don't know, man, because you got to count the songs from way back in 2011. So, I know I probably got about 500 to 1,000 songs. I don't know. I got to check, though. Damn. But, I, like, a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's like the game done changed, though. It's just like, when I was coming up first in it, all these opportunities weren't not that out there. Like, Instagram went out there. It was like MySpace and Twitter. And, you know, these... You couldn't book your own interview, and you ain't you couldn't get on Distro Kid and yeah. all that, and put your stuff out. So this okay at the next level. Yeah, you had to, you had to be like a major artist to um, do certain things, and from the time back then to the time now, it's totally gonna change. You know what I'm saying? Because I came up in that era where you had to watch the uh, the video music videos on BET. You want no YouTube? You know what I'm saying? So I used to be in the summertime. When I was little, I used to be in front of the TV watching music videos, like, yeah. all day. One of Sister Park, you know what I'm saying? Like, all day. What would you say inspires you? What 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 wakes you up in the day? Or what wakes you up in the morning? My music. Yeah. Hey, bro, today I got to get up. And I got to keep pursuing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I keep going. Cause I done seen the lifestyle. I'm seeing, I'm in Atlanta when I was in Atlanta, I'm seeing niggas pulling up in Lamborghinis. I'm seeing niggas pulling up in Rolls Royce Raiders. I'm seeing niggas pulling up in all this foreign shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing the lifestyle. Like I'm seeing all these famous rappers. I'm being around them every day. Like I'm seeing the lifestyle. Like they used to have parties at, like album release parties at the studio. And we, we would hit the records before they even get out. Like, we hear it live, watching the performance right, yeah. live before the song. Like, okay, let's just say your album dropped in five days. The night before, I'm already hearing it before y'all hear it. Y'all ain't even hearing it. You know what I'm saying? So. Niggas just yeah. in that party. And get like, J. Cole, I remember him coming downstairs, like, shaking my hand. was like, what's up, man? Uh, where's B.O.B.? I'm like, J. Cole asked me where B.O.B. at? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, man. That's a crazy moment. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, like, man, the, the industry, man, you know, it kind of showed me, like, uh, you know, this is your workplace when you come to the studio, and this is how I am. I don't like too many people. I don't like people in the studio when I'm in the studio because I'm here to work. You know, I ain't got time. I'm, I'm spending my own money. I ain't got time to be, um, you know what I'm saying, worry about getting no features, messing with the engineer, being high, making too much noise. I ain't got time for that. When I go in the studio, I'm going there to work. Like, yeah. just me and the engineer, whoever else, you know what I'm saying? But 
don't disturb me when I'm rapping. And, and I, I understand how they feel. Like, when you in their workspace, you can be nice to them, be friendly, but don't try to just be like, oh, they got my CD and such and such. Unless they ask you, then, you know, you go about that. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people don't ask me, well, what you do, man? I'm like, I rap and such and such. I'm like, all right, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, then I ask me and stuff like that, and all that got my number and stuff, but. It's a way about. I understand, like, in your workspace, you gotta work, like, you gotta produce, like, you need your mind to be, you know, where you need to be at. So, what do we got coming up next for Wolf Soldier? Hey, man, we got them videos coming, man. We got. We got so, what's lot. the first one we get? Do you know? Uh, it's an unreleased song. Um, I'm not gonna put it out there quite yet until I got until I get the video and stuff. Yeah. But it's it's gonna be a crazy, you know what I'm saying, vibe to you know what I'm saying. You got a general timeline? What are we looking at? How long do we got? Oh, uh, like in a couple weeks. Oh, okay. Oh, that's quick. A couple weeks, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so unreleased song. I wanna I wanna do that first before I do running back because it just it, it got a little storyline to it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like an introduction back, like Okay, he's back. You know what I'm saying? He got new stuff out, new video. You know what I'm saying? When you drop, you drop full, like full projects. Do you drop uh, like just singles? Not yeah, I drop full or? projects, but I don't think I've been really consistent like that though. Hmm. Like I got a project called Do Biggie. I got a project called um, Quad Levert. Hmm. A project called Twelve and Young, but that's not on Apple Music or nothing like that. But I got I, I drop a lot of singles and stuff with. Definitely got some shit on the way, like an EP, two EPs on the way. We got it's like it's like a part one and a part two. I ain't gonna say the name just yet. Two it's weeks? Not, no, no, not the EP, not the two. Weeks. <laughs> like I don't want to like say the name, but that's you still, you still, when you're still not posted, decided. you gonna know, huh? You still deciding on the name? Deciding what? Are you still deciding on the name or? No, no, I got the name. Oh, okay. But I just ain't gonna say it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you had like one piece of advice for like a younger you or maybe another artist trying to like follow in your footsteps, what would that be? Man, go get the bag first. Because with music, it, in order to make money into music, you have to go outside of music to make money. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. Uh, or unless you just a viral sensation where you just put out something, you just go viral instantly, but that's like scratching off the lottery. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, go get the money first so you can invest in yourself. And you know what I'm saying? And do things like that. Before we get out of here though, is there anything uh, that we haven't talked about that you want to bring up? Uh, man, just stay tuned, man. I got, I got some, some new stuff on the way. You said two weeks? Nah, a couple of weeks. You said, yeah, two, oh, a couple or like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we about to shoot it, you know what I'm saying? So okay. it's going to take a little time to get edited, but when it come, just just, you, just, just wait on it. It's, it's, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Where can uh, folks find you on social media? Uh, Wap Soldier, G-W-A-P-S-O-U-L-J-A. You know what I'm saying? Why is everything wrong? Bad, no cap, we talking about facts. I double the rib, let's stack. Won't kick in my feet, up won't lag. We born.